So welcome everybody. Uh, welcome. It's great to be here at PS Confi U, the mini con. Um, thanks, Gail and everyone for for having us uh, here. Um, what's new in PowerShell 7.5? Um, the interesting thing is uh, we don't have a whole lot of slides, yay, but we do have demos. So this is going to be kind of fun um, to kind of talk about uh, what we're about to uh, release uh, to everyone. So. Well, I'm going to try to change my slide now. Come on. There we go. There's the lineup. There's, as we're walking around, I, that's kind of what we look like. Uh, I'm Jason Helmick, a product manager on the PowerShell team. I focus on things like uh, DSC, PS, and security, and a few other things as well. And I'm joined today by, well, an amazing and infamous Sean Wheeler. Hello, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Jason. And hello, PS Comfy U. Um, for those who of you who might not know me, I uh, am the lead uh, owner of the PowerShell documentation. Um, it's it's basically me along with uh, Mikey Lombardi are responsible for all of the PowerShell docs itself. Um, Mikey especially does all the heavy lifting in the DSC space. Um, I couldn't do that without him. And um, also on our team is Mike Robbins. Uh, he owns the Azure PowerShell content. Um, but anyway, we're here to talk about what's new in PowerShell 7.5. Yeah, 7.5 for this release. So we're on an odd uh, uh, release year this year. This is a non-LTS release for this year. And really, in a nutshell, what you're going to see from Sean and I is uh, we made a lot of, and I, I, I say we, I'm going to explain that in a second, but we've made a lot of investments um, in quality, security, stability, and performance. And I think you're going to see some demos out of each one of those uh, today uh, that we've been looking for. I said uh, uh, we have been uh, doing this. Here's what I mean by we. I think one of the interesting things you'll notice by the time we hit the end of this presentation is a lot of the contributions are by the community, by you, which is really an amazing feat when you think about it. Look, we know that what you know, you file an issue and you work with the issue and then you get through the working groups and you get a PR and then you work through all the process to get a PR and then finally it makes it into the product. It's a lot of work there for you and for us. And I just want to thank everybody for putting that effort um, forward as we dive into this. Now, um, look, PowerShell 7.5 when it releases. So here's what the release plan is. It, it, just like in past years, um, we'll release before Christmas, probably in November, but it may be December. Either way, well, hopefully you'll have a nice Christmas present to play with with 7.5. It's ready for you to test and start to adopt and put in. And of course, come out to the repo and let us know if you find anything that we need to know about. For the agenda today, well, we're going to take a look at basically what's new the what's new page and we're going to go through some things that some of the highlights that we think are a lot of fun um we'll go through some breaking changes some of the experimental features oh we got some neat experimental features over here that uh, we get to show some of the new commandlets and some general improvements and then we'll we'll open up the floor uh, for questions and stuff like that does that sound like a, a plan folks sound like something okay that's cool roll. well yeah, let's roll. So, Sean, do you want to kind of, uh, here, let me bring up uh, highlights. See, I like my little highlight <laughs> slide. Yay. And the first thing we're going to be looking at is breaking changes. So, it's out there. And um, let me stop sharing my screen. And, Sean, you want to talk about some breaking changes? Yeah, let me share my screen. And we will get, i got to hit the share button. There we go. And let's move this out of the way. All right. Um, so, yes, uh, right at the top of the article here, we have our breaking changes. There's not a whole lot here. Most of these are, um, I would say, more bug fixes than breaking changes. Um, but uh, th they do change some functionality. Um, so we call them out as breaking changes. A um, couple of ones I want to highlight here is, um, this one here about blocking help from network locations in restricted remoting sessions. This is a security uh, feature um, that prevents uh, help from injecting uh, commandlets in your session that uh, 
shouldn't be allowed, like in a constrained language mode um, session. So that's uh, an improvement there. And then this is one of the community contributions that we talked about. The Windows installer now remembers the installation options you chose. You chose. So the next time uh, you install the MSI package, especially when, if you're installing it um, sort of in the unattended quiet mode, it will use the same settings that you had before. Um, really nice thing there. The, the other thing I want to call out is that uh, we're shipping uh, two new module versions. Um, the Microsoft PowerShell resource, PS Resource Kit module is now the 1.1 Preview 2. That was what Sydney was just talking about in the previous session. And um, we're shipping PS Readline 235. Now, really, 235 is um, no different than 234. Um, it's just a, uh, we had to update our build pipeline. And in order to do that, we have to ship a new version. So it's just a version bump. There's no, no changes from 234. But um, if you're not on 234, I highly recommend it. Um, PS Readline is one of those uh, modules that's constantly being updated um, with fun new features. So you'll want to check that out. Um, next we're going to look at uh, experimental features. Yeah, so let's dive in and do one of the. You got one of those up, right? Yeah, so uh, over here is the experimental features uh, documentation, and you'll notice in the table here, the green check boxes means these are experimental features that have gone mainstream. Uh, so they, they started out life as experimental features, and uh, as of um, PowerShell 7.5, Preview 5, they're now um, mainstream. So there's no... Um, experimental feature flag that you have to turn on to get this stuff. And um, uh, first one I want to talk about is this um, module auto load skip offline files feature. Um, this was a feature that was added to um, solve some of the problems with OneDrive redirecting your documents folder where you install your modules. And um, if, if you were redirecting uh, your documents folder through whatever uh, file redirection technology you're using, uh, it could cause problems with the uh, commandlet discovery and module loading because um, OneDrive will move those files to the cloud um, and try to load them back from the cloud um, on demand, but that breaks PowerShell. Uh, what this feature does is that if the file is not available locally um, in OneDrive, then it skips it, and it's like uh, the module is not installed. So that'll prevent uh, module load errors and uh, commandlet discovery problems but it means that the, the module's not available to you. Uh, so it's a slightly better experience, um, but it doesn't completely solve the problem of OneDrive. Uh, and then this next one, the um, PS command with args. Jason, you want to... Uh... Oh, yeah, 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 let me show that one. Uh, let's try a fast screen share here, see what happens. Ta -da. Ta-da! Ta-da! Will it? Do I need to stop sharing? May, may, maybe. Um, I've stopped sharing. Now you should try to share. Uh, let me try to share again here. I thought that was going to work. Well, now that. Uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go.
Is it showing sure up, is. Sean? Yes. Yay, so I'm going into experimental features too. <laughs> so let me go down here. And there's a couple of them that I wanted to, uh, to show you. One of them is this one right here, PS command with args. And I, I, I'm going to just go into the documentation because I'm going to run the documentation example in this case. Um, so here's what the idea is. Um, PS command with args means that you can run a PowerShell command and pass it arguments. If you take a look right here, and it'll use those arguments. And so I want to just kind of demonstrate this for you so that you can see. Now, one of the things that I want to do is I want you to notice I'm in 7.5 preview, but when I paste this in here, this right now would launch PowerShell 7.4 on my system. So I'm going to go over here and change it to PWSH preview so we know we're running in PowerShell 7.5, and it will snap right back. I'm hoping it's going to snap right back. There we go. By returning those arguments, that's what we were asking it to do. So there's some flexibility in here now. If you use the old dash command, you can specify something, but you couldn't pass arguments to it. So now this makes it a little bit easier for you to, to pass the arguments with. Um, another one of my favorite ones is, oh, hey. let's go back here. Command not found suggestion at the top. Yeah, is he at the top? There he is. He has command not found suggestion. Now, I have to tell you, this, this, <laughs> I just love this. I'm not going to necessarily, oh, I am going to run the demo that's in there. So, you know how, I, I don't know about you, but I pretty much fat finger a lot of things. And you've noticed, you know, when I type something on the screen. But when I type something in and if I fat finger it or something, I get these suggestions now. And it, because I'm on a Mac, I get things like Gem and GPT, and I've got Get installed, so I get Get. So it's giving me these suggestions. This is really um, kind of helpful. Oh, and by the way, I just want to remind everybody, if you're not using it, one of the best things in the world to use, and this really isn't a 7.5 thing, but I, I just want to point it out, is y'all are using these, um, you see that, that great text? Y'all are using... Um, uh, PS read lines, predictive intelligence, right? And you can use F2 so you can get a list of your, I'm showing you all my stuff, but yeah, you can get a list of your commands and all that kind of stuff. Along with some of the feedback providers and uh, other predictors that are there, it creates this great usage flexibility. And that's really what I, I love about command uh, not found suggestion, along with all of the other things we've included in predictive intelligence and so forth, is trying to make it a little bit easier for you to be able to execute and run commands. So that's really what the idea is. Um, Sean, did we decide that I have to stop sharing for you to be able to share? Um, no. So the next thing we're going to talk about is there's three new features. Um, if you go back to the docs page, the three features at the bottom, uh, go to the top, go to the table again. So the three features at the bottom of the table um, You're going to do a long have, number? Um, so, yeah, the, um, just real quick description of this uh, PS serialized JSON long enums as number. Um, you can create a uh, enumeration definition where the values are long integers. Um, and this feature um, just gives you the same behavior you have with other uh, standard integers where it'll show... Um, the number by default uh, instead of the string value. Um, you have the uh, enum as strings option with when you convert to JSON um, to be able to see it. But uh, that's what that one's all about. It's not too exciting, but uh, that's what it is. But uh, one of the exciting ones here, Jason, you're going to demo is uh, redirecting to a variable. Okay, I, I okay, I like this. <laughs> I'm not going to do the thing that's in there. I just I, I I I like playing with this. So one of the things you like to do, be able to do, is uh, direct your output to to a variable and redirect it out. So you'd think something like meh, 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 dollar sign var. Well, that ain't going to work. But we do have a way now. And as a matter of fact, if you take a look, we've got documentation. Show you a couple of examples here, but. Here's what here's what you want to do is you want to redirect your data to yeah you ever work I I I I was about to say did you ever work with the set variable uh, commandlet of course you have um, so it's kind of similar to that um, 
So if I do this the correct way, let me clear my screen here. And as a matter of fact, uh, let's see, redirect. What did I, what was a uh, very, uh, oh, hey, there, predictive intelligence. Thank you, makes this a lot easier. And now if I look at dollar sign var, yeah, there's my data. So we've added this to make your life a little bit easier. Whoa, went too far to make your life a little bit easier as well. So you can redirect your output into a variable and then be able to pull it back. Kind of cool, Sean? Yeah, actually, I, the, the example on the docs there, I think, is pretty cool, too. Um, well, yeah. It, it, of yeah, course you think that you did. Didn't you write yeah. that example? Um, <laughs> well, no, I stole it from Jim. So you'll notice oh, that the, okay. out, the output there from that script block, we got output one and output two, but we didn't get the warning output because we're redirecting the warning stream into a variable called warnings. So now let's look at dollar warnings. Warning, warning, warning. And there you go. So um, there's there's another way of, of using it. Um, all right. And then last one was um, PS Native Windows tilde expansion. This is the one where um, okay, you I'm need to stop, stop sharing. sharing. Yeah, because you're going to show this one. Yeah. And I'll share my screen, and we'll go back here. So uh, you can you can see in um, I'm here in PowerShell 745, and we've had this uh, ability here. So I, if I do a cd tilde slash um, whatever, and I hit tab here, it converts the tilde to my home directory. Like um, that, that's that's normal. But if I try to run a native command, um, and let's just uh, let's do this. Like, I run CMD, and I want to echo the value of tilde. I just get tilde. But if I go over here to uh, PowerShell 7.5 and I run this same command, what's happening is uh, with this experimental feature, um, PowerShell sees that you're running a native command, you're passing tilde on the command line to it, it's going to expand it into your uh, home directory path before it passes it to the native command. Um, so this is and this is how it works where, Jason? It works like this on Mac and Linux. So this is very cross-platformy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is what uh, people expect on non-Windows shells, is that uh, tilde gets resolved. Uh, but Windows native applications may or may not know how to expand tilde. So that's what that's all about. Just just a little fun fact, as we were talking about the tilde and, and cross-platform and all that, all of my demos are being done on a Mac. All of Sean's are being done on Windows. We've got tilde. It's cats and dogs living together. It's, it's, it, it's, it's great. Um, next, another new feature, and this is, again, a contribution from uh, the community. Uh, we've added two new commandlets, convert to CLI XML and convert from CLI XML. And you may ask, Jason, what would you ask? So 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 wait a minute, didn't we already have these? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if we look at our CLI XML, what do we have? We have um, export, export right. and import. Export. Well, the difference here is the pipeline. Export and import are all about files. Yeah. Export writes uh, CLI XML to a file. Import reads uh, CLI XML from a file. The convert to and convert from is all about the pipeline. So let's take a look at how this looks. So I'm going to get um, a process object here. And you can see uh, I, I, I got the current um, PowerShell instance that I'm running right here. And we can see I've got um, uh, a process object. Now I'm going to convert that to CLI XML. 
And you see now I've got the uh, deserialized form of that. And I can convert that back, that XML, back into an object. And now you see I have an object. But let's take a look at these types. So um, $PS holds the original process object that I created. And you can see that it's a system diagnostics process. Uh, and then from XML was converted from CLI XML. And it's a deserialized system diagnostics process. So that's the same results you'd get with export and import, but it's all on the pipeline now. Yeah, and so if you think about it, now you have, you know, one of the things that I, I, I remember that this used to uh, be impactful to me as well is I love export CLI XML, but sometimes you want to make some manipulations in there. You might want to make some adjustments to the nodes or something like that. Now with convert, you have still have pipelining that you can do some of that with. So I think that's really valuable. What else you got, Sean? Um, well, that kind of brings us into uh, the rest of everything else. So there's okay, been a well, whole wait minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop sharing for a second so I can share the slides. So I can, uh, we don't need to share the slides. Go ahead. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to there at the well, end. Well, I'll pick them up. Yeah, they're just pictures. Um, so, yeah. So we have a whole bunch of tab improvements. Um, this is an area that um, uh, yeah. a, a couple people have been instrumental in, in doing this over the past several versions. Um, and these are all quality of life improvements for you. Um, tab completion works almost everywhere now. It's, it's amazing. Bunch of improvements to web commands, um, uh, more so in previous versions than uh, 7.5, but um, uh, lots of good stuff going on there. And then just lots of other um, improvements. There's been several uh, uh, updates to the JSON commandlets. Uh, and uh, one of the ones that's really fun to take a look at is um, Jordan Borian did some performance improvements in 7.5. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so everybody knows about um, how what a bad idea it is to um, use uh, array addition, right? That the plus equals operator when you're adding items to an array. It just doesn't scale and it can be really slow. So what I've got here is this uh, function that is um, that tests three different ways of adding to an array. There's direct assignment where we're just um, iterating over a collection and assigning that to a variable. Um, in, in this test, we are using the um, list object type and using the add method, and uh, which is usually the go-to uh, for performance for most people. And then uh, we're showing the uh, plus equals uh, array addition, which is usually the slowest. So let's look at what this looks like in... Um, I'm going to clear my screen here, and we'll run this in 745. Um, and you can see, you know, at 5,000 items, it took 496 milliseconds, um, and it was 612 times slower than direct assignment. Uh, when you bump that up to 10,000, uh, it, it really wow. gets bad. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> now, over here in 7.5 with Jordan's update, boom, look at that. And now plus equals is in second place instead of third. It beats the list add method. That's pretty stunning. When yeah. You get down to it. It, I mean, it's really stunning. So um, uh, I think um, so. Along with that, um, we, we're pretty demos. much at Let's our our, our demo time. So we'll open up for questions. Oh, One thing oh, to kind oh, of throw out there slides, is the call to action. Slides, that's right. Grab a hold so, of seven five when we release the previews out right again. now, so you can uh, you know use the preview and try that out. But grab seven five, and let us know if you run into any issues.